shores around you. This is Dr. Andre Thomas, and I'm sharing with you today the word of the Lord. There is a burden on my heart. There is a word on fire in my spirit that I have to share with somebody. It's the subject of preemptive prayer. It's the subject of taking preemptive action before the enemy strikes. The Lord God gave me a vision on Monday morning. And on Monday morning, I saw a field being plowed. And as this field was being plowed, the enemy said that the enemy has plowed the land, getting ready for him to sow seed and for the rain of an ideal environment to create devastating demonic attacks on people. And he said, I must teach all this week on dealing with the devil at your door because the devil is at the door of many people. And he spoke to me and said, you must speak to the people that hear you. You must speak to the people that listen to you. You must speak to the people that you mentor. So I've come today from the presence of God to share with you how to deal with the devil at your door. On Monday, I shared how to deal with sin at your door. On Tuesday, I shared how to deal with trouble at your door. And we had a problem with, with our with with our broadcaster, but I'm going to continue from where I left off because this is so important. And not only that, there's a song that I'm going to share with you that I want you to learn, I want you to sing, and we're going to pray with this song because it's very important for what the Lord is speaking to me about. Now, this is the hour of watching and praying and doing preemptive prayer. Now, let's break it down for you. In Genesis chapter 4, the Holy Spirit used the language for the first time and introduced this language to man. And the Holy Spirit was speaking to Cain. And let's look at the language. So let's turn to the book of Genesis chapter 4. Okay, let's turn to Genesis. 
This turns in Genesis chapter 4. And we are going to look to verse 5. Well, from verse 4. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, and the Lord God respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fell? If you did well, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And his desire is for you that it should rule over you. He said, sin lieth at your door, which means every person has a door to their life. Every person has spiritual boundaries around you, and there's a door. So sin was at the door of his life. It means that in the realm of the spirit, there's a door. Now, there is a door to you. Man has physical doors. A door to you is your mouth. A, your mouth is a door to you. Your nostril is a door to you. Your ears are a door to you. Your eyes are a door to you. Your skin is also a door. So there are parts of your body that are doors inside your body. It's the same way in your spirit man that there are doors to your spirit life and there are doors to your life. And so I want you to understand this. Just as there are physical doors, I mean, just as there are mental doors, the emotional doors, the spiritual doors. And spiritual doors are the most important doors because the spirit realm regulates the natural realm. The natural realm is a printout of what's happening within the spirit realm. So spiritual doors are the most important doors. Any, in any realm, in any field of human endeavor, the spiritual dimension of it is actually the most important. It's definitely the most important. So what I want you to grasp and understand is that your life has a spiritual door. And at the spiritual door of Cain was sin. Now, so I talked on Monday about sin at your door. But there are other things from the kingdom of darkness that can be at your door. You can have trouble at your door. You can have destruction at your door. You can have poverty at your door. You can have depression at your door. It means it has not entered yet, but it's at your door. And you've got to learn how to intercept and stop what is at your door. Somebody's going to learn how to do that because there are battles you can avoid. Now, there's certain battles you cannot avoid. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So the battles that you cannot avoid are battles of graduation. So there's certain battles that you need to fight to graduate. To graduate from Egypt to the wilderness, you had to fight a battle with Pharaoh. To graduate from the wilderness to the promised land, you had to deal with Jericho and you had to deal with the giants in the land. So there are battles of graduation. Those you cannot avoid. Number two, there are battles of defense. Battles of defense, Bible says that when Jesus was speaking in the synagogue and shared with them in Luke chapter 4, he said, the spirit of God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And it so angered the demonic kingdom that the, that the, demonic, the demonic kingdom stirred up the people and they took Jesus to throw him over the cliff. That's because they wanted to stop Jesus from fulfilling his calling. So there are attacks that are to stop you from manifesting what God has for you. So those are counter attacks. So there are what? Battles of graduation and there are counter attack battles where Satan counter attacks you. So those are two battles. Those two battles are unavoidable. 
So you would have to deal with those battles. But then there are some other battles that you can preempt. There's some counterattack battles you cannot preempt. You got to deal with it when the battle is in action. The Bible says that the men took Jesus to throw him over the cliff. So that means they took Jesus, they manhandled him, and they took him from the temple and took him about to throw him over the cliff. And at the cliff, Jesus walked through the midst of them. Somebody's going to walk through trouble. Somebody's going to walk through sin. I mean, somebody's going to walk through demonic attacks. I've come here to prophesy to somebody. I don't know what you're facing, but I can sense it in the spirit. I can sense there are men and women who are facing, they're surrounded by challenges. Just as there were men about to throw Jesus over the cliff, there are challenges, there are devils, there are situations that have come around you, conspired to throw you over the cliff. I've come to tell you that by the anointing of God, you shall not be thrown over the cliff. You shall walk through them. And the Bible says Jesus walked through them by the Holy Ghost. So that's a counterattack. The Holy Ghost is telling me that I need to show you this in the Bible. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Okay, Luke chapter 4. So you see this. Because somebody needs to be inspired by the word. Luke chapter 4. Okay. Now, in Luke chapter 4, okay, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. So Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, we see the battles of graduation. So to move from one level to another, there was a demonic battle that Jesus had to fight because Jesus was now moving from his season of preparation to his season of manifestation. His season of graduation, his ministry was about to become known. The gift of God in him was about to be announced to the world. He was about to step out of obscurity. He was about to step into the things that heaven had for him. And there was now a battle of what? Graduation. Remember this, battles of graduation. Now, so he graduated, okay? And we see he won every battle. He fought three battles with the devil. Okay, then in verse 13, now when the devil had ended every temptation, which is every test and trial, he departed from him until an opportune time. So he departed from Jesus because Jesus overcame and Jesus stepped. Then the Bible says in verse 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He went into the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit. But after the battle, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah. He returned, he began with the mantle, with the anointing on him. But he returned after the battle in the power of that mantle. So Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went throughout all the surrounding region. So the fame of him, the news of him, went throughout the entire region. That there is an anointed man in town. There's a new business in town. There's a new marriage in town. There's a new relationship in town. There's a new family in town. There's a new breakthrough in town. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. People were like, wow, my God, we haven't seen something like this. What happened next? Next thing that happened was a counterattack. So Jesus goes to his hometown. And he takes the book, in verse 16, it says that it came as his custom was, and he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he read that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, and as he reads, okay, in the same situation, okay, go further down, in verse 28, so all those in the synagogue which heard him say those things were filled with wrath. Wrath always has an expression. You can be angry and sin not, but you cannot have wrath and not sin. Wrath 
is uncontrolled anger. Wrath is anger on steroids. So they were not filled with anger because the Bible says be angry and sin not. But you cannot have wrath and not sin. And wrath causes you to say things, do things, behave in ways that are sinful. And so wrath filled them and, and they rose up and thrust him out of the city. They, threw, they thrust Jesus out of the city. Okay, let's read from the New Living Translation. So jumping up, they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built and they intended to push him over the cliff. That was now a counterattack. So they're counterattack battles that when you're now stepping into breakthrough, you're now in what God has for you, they're counterattack battles which you cannot avoid. Okay. And the Bible says he passed through, he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. And Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught there in the synagogue every Sabbath day. I've come to let somebody know, I declare by the Spirit that you are going to pass through the problems. You are going to pass through the trouble. You are going to pass through the counter-attack. These are two types of battles. Now, there's a third kind of battle that God does not want you to deal with. This third kind of battle is a battle that you can preempt. You can stop it. Jesus could not stop these two battles, but they're battles that Jesus preempted. They're battles that Jesus stopped before they happened. They, he stopped before they happened. And the battles I'm talking about right now are the battles that I'm talking that the devil is at your door. So when the devil is at your door, He's looking for an opportune time to come in through the door. He's at your door, and the problem is your door is open. Mm. Your door is open. This is not an attack on the, on the field of assignment. This is an attack because your door is open. So what the Spirit of God was telling Cain is that sin is at your door. Sin is at your door. Sin is at your door. Mm. Demons are at your door. Poverty is at your door. Need is at your door. Jesus. Never been married is, is at your door. Jesus. Unfulfillment is, is at your door. Sickness is at your door. Cancer is at your door. High blood pressure is at your door. It's at your door. Trouble is at your door. So now this one you can deal with. Now, let's go to the key scripture. Mm -mm -mm. Is somebody getting me? Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 10. It says, Thus saith the Lord God, on that day shall come to pass that thoughts shall arise in your mind and you shall make an evil plan and you shall say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are, and against that are again inhabited, and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. Mm. Sheba, Dedan, and merchants of Tashis, and all their young lions shall say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods to a great plunder? Now, this is what has happened. Well, the prophet Ezekiel is prophesying, and is prophesying of what shall happen, that the nations of Seba, Dan, shall speak 
and they shall say of, of the land of Israel that we're going to come and we're going to attack a land where the people dwell peacefully. They have no walls around them. Wow. They have no what? Walls around them. Now, if you study the Old Testament and study history, you, you'll find that there were many cities that were protected with what? Walls. The walls of Jericho, the city of Jericho had walls, but there were certain cities that had no walls. So those cities were vulnerable. So there are people who I'm speaking to right now, there are no walls around you. There are no walls of prayer around you. There are no walls of the anointing around you. And because there are no walls of anointing around you, no walls of prayer around you, the enemy is going to enter in and he's going to strike because there's no defense around you. So I'm prophesying, I'm speaking to people by the wisdom of God that it's time for you to build up walls around you. It's time for you to build up walls of prayer around your family, walls of prayer around your business, walls of prayer around your children, walls of prayer around your destiny, walls of prayer around your life. By building, by building that, you do what's called interception prayer or preemptive prayer in which you, because you're watching and praying, you perceive when demonic atmospheres enter into your life because a demonic manifestation is about to enter into your natural life. Before a satanic account, before a satanic attack occurs in your life, a demonic atmosphere would enter the spirit realm of your life. Before a demonic attack is launched on your life, a demonic atmosphere will enter into your life. And if you discern it, you can take preemptive prayer. And preemptive prayer and preemptive action will stop it. So there's preemptive prayer and there's preemptive action. There's preemptive prayer and there's preemptive action. There's preemptive prayer and there's preemptive action. So let me give an example. I remember I was preaching in church one day. I was preaching in church. As I looked while I was preaching, I saw a demon in the realm of the spirit at the door of the church. And it was looking. And it was looking. And it was looking through how to come in. And it identified one particular person in the church and was going to come through that person to cause trouble in the church. And guess what? I saw it. So what did I do? I took preemptive action in prayer and preemptive action, naturally speaking, and nothing happened. Because guess what I did? I took what? Preemptive action. I took what? Preemptive action. Example, so my wife, for example, has been praying. I remember some times past, the Lord spoke to her and, and she, she heard from the spirit and the Lord spoke to her about how to manage our, our finances. And the Lord showed her that there was a period coming in which some of the revenue streams that we had shall dry up. And the Lord spoke to her and she did what? She took preemptive action. And we went through that period and it was fine. That's because she heard from God and took preemptive action. Now, I have also been praying for my children and I'm praying for my children and the Holy Spirit shows me a certain demonic attacks that are ordained for them. These are not graduation attacks. These are not counter attacks. These are not counter attacks of destiny. These are opportunist attacks. Oh my God. These are what opportunist attacks. Opportunist attacks, you must stop. Somebody say, I'm going to stop every opportunist attack. You can minimize your warfare and only deal with graduation attacks 
and counter attacks. Now, graduation attacks is when you are advancing, when you are taking new territory and you fight on your terms. When, so when you are going to take the promised land, there, there are battles you have to fight. Those are graduation attacks. Those are battles to take you to the next level. Okay, so those are graduation attacks. I mean, those are graduation battles. But opportunist attacks, you must be able to deal with those because you can deal with those by taking preemptive action. So there are opportunist attacks that are at the door of people that are listening to me right now. And this is why I'm coming to you. My spirit is burdened over that. I see it in the realm of the spirit. And you, there's some of you, you need to just take an all night prayer meeting just by yourself. And you pray over your life, bind any attack and deal with it. You don't deal with opportunist attacks when they're in. Now, I have, because I'm giving you intelligence. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. Now, Jesus said, watch and pray. What's the purpose of watching? The purpose of watching is to give you intelligence. So you know when a good thing is coming to you and you have intelligence when a demonic attack is coming to you. So Jesus told them, watch Get intelligence and pray from the intelligence that you get so that you don't enter into tests and trials. So that tests and trials do not win and prevail in your life. And you deal and get stopped by attacks that you should not, that you should not go through. And they stop you on the course of destiny. We can be smarter than that. So the people who They've been waking up to a bad sense in their spirit. And you're thinking is this, is that. No, that bad sense you get in your spirit is a demonic attack has been planned. And the spiritual realm is giving you, the Holy Ghost is giving you an impression. Now, let them get an example. In the various Western governments, they have a, a, a system called the terror, the, terror, the terror threat level. And there are various levels. So there's threat level normal, which means there are always terrorists that are trying to strike. And then if they get intelligence of an imminent attack, of what an imminent attack, what do they do? They raise the threat level and then they raise the attention and then it can go to the level, which is the highest level, which means you're going to have police officers, you're going to have uh, surveillance at a heightened level. And there are many times in America, a heightened threat level has followed many attacks. Because what happened? They, get, they hear chatter. What's chatter? The surveillance that's done against the enemy so you have intelligence agencies who watch. They watch what's happening in the camp of the terrorists. They watch through, I mean, cyber surveillance. They watch through human surveillance. They watch through drone surveillance. They watch through social media surveillance. And when they notice that the chatter is heightened and they hear certain keywords, they know an attack is imminent and they raise the threat level and they have been able to stop hundreds of attacks because of this. Right now, there is a threat level that has been issued. Now, if you go to the news, you'll see that a threat uh, level has been increased on all organizations in Britain, Canada and America that are working on the COVID-19 virus vaccine because they have realized that Russian hackers are trying to what? Steal it. 
So they've raised the threat level. So now hospitals that are involved in trials would now do what? Raise their defenses. So there's an announcement. It's on CNN. It's on the news. Russian hackers are trying to steal proprietary information on COVID-19. It's the threat level. That's because somebody was watching kids. So the world of warfare, so this is cyber warfare. Okay, I mean, this is warfare about stealing secrets. They have watchmen who watch. Now, here's the thing. There are people who are professional watchmen. They, they are cyber watchmen. You have organizations like the NSA in the States who their job is surveillance to protect U.S. interests. They're watching. They're watching. Now, you need to understand that you have assets called your destiny that you need to watch. You have a life that's precious that you need to watch over. You have children, you have relationships that are precious that you need to watch over. And you need to be able to discern when the climate changes, when the enemy is about to launch an attack. Mm -mm -mm. And then you take preemptive action. Like I told you, there's certain attacks you cannot stop. You have to deal with it when it happens. And those are what? Somebody write down, them down. Graduation attacks and what? Counter attacks against the progress of your destiny. But you can stop opportunist attacks. Somebody say, I'm going to take action. And right now I sense in my spirit that the people who are about to receive an opportunist attack. And I am challenging you by the spirit of God. If you are getting a sense in your spirit that's not good, you do not, you, you see, let me explain. When the chatter is there, many times they, they cannot pinpoint when the attack is going to happen, where the attack is going to happen. But they know an attack is imminent. And when they do that, many times they fall the attack. So some of you, you need to get on your guard right now. You need to be on a heightened state of alert because the spirit of God has spoken to the prophet and he's told the prophet, there are people who listen to you who are under eminent, eminent attack. An attack is eminent. And here's the thing, you can stop it. You can stop it. And by the grace of God, you will stop it. It could be an attack of sin. It could be an attack of trouble. It could be an attack. It could be a psychological attack. It could be an emotional attack. It could be a spiritual attack. It could be a health attack. But I decree every attack we shall foil in the name of Jesus. So right now, as a family, as a family, oh my God, as a family, let's join together and let's pray that men and women get alert. We want a spirit of alertness to flood this greatness camp. This camp that takes people from bondage to greatness. Now, I'm not responsible for every camp, but I'm responsible for my camp. And I'm sounding the alarm in my camp that there's a new wave. There's a new wave of demonic attacks coming that are opportunist. But they shall not touch this camp. They shall not occur. They shall not succeed at this camp. We shall sidestep them and overcome them in the name of Jesus. And it shall come basically at an individual level. So everybody needs to be their brother's keeper. Everybody needs to wise up. There's some of you, you need to pray three nights of all night prayer just to defend what you have. It could be in your health. Now remember, when the Spirit of God shows you, you not only pray, but sometimes you need to take what? Action in the natural. You need to take action in the natural. Like I 
have been in relationships and the Holy Ghost has given me a dream. And in the dream, I saw that this relationship that's close to me is going to betray me in something important. And as I've seen it, I've taken action. And I've reordered the relationship. And no betrayal has occurred because guess what? I sidestepped the betrayal. The betrayal of Judas was necessary. But there are many other places that Jesus could have been attacked that he avoided because he knew how to do it. So that betrayal by that person that I saw was not necessary. And I even told my wife, I said, okay, this is it. So this is the spirit. So I'm going to sidestep it. And I sidestep it. Hallelujah. And the plan of the enemy was avoided. So this was not something that I could deal with in prayer. I prayed about it, but I had to take what? Action. So I just changed the dynamic of the relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't speak to the person. No need to speak to the person. The enemy, I saw the plan of the enemy. So this happens in all different areas. I've seen attacks on my children and I've had to take what? Action. Like my wife, uh, the Lord gave her a dream and we and she saw an attack on one of my, a particular attack on one of my children some time back. And we actually spoke about it and we sensed to speak to the child about it. We spoke to her about it, right? And, and so she had the mindset to deal with that and we were able to sidestep that. So in that case, we needed to actually talk to one of my children about what we saw so they could sidestep the attack. This is the wisdom of God for you. So you don't only, there's so lots of people sense things and don't take action. Now, I remember one of our, my relationships that was very close to me. One morning, I actually was with them. And that morning, they perceived that there was danger with their family in another part of the world. And when we were talking, I said, why don't you not go to work today? Why don't you just stay and pray and deal with the situation and call them and find out what is happening? They said, well, Right now, I'm not in the mood to pray. And they went to work. When they came home, they let me know that something happened. And what happened? They received a call that their sister's estranged husband walked into their house took a knife and put it through the throat of their grandmother and then took off his clothes, went to a tree and hung himself outside in the house and his son came and watched him. That was a opportunist attack and God spoke to this particular relationship that I had, this, this, this uh, 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 relationship that was in my life, I'm protecting the relationship. And, and uh, told them about it. They told me about it, but they took no action. And as a result of that, their grandmother died and the sister actually died later. And the estranged husband died. So three people died because they did not act to prevent the attack. And it could have been, those three people could be living right now. So this is serious. You need to share this video with everybody that you love. Because I'm seen in the realm of the spirit as a prophet. There's a wave coming. Brasica. Brahmana Shovre is a Karabasuta. There's a wave coming. 
and people need to be alert. Don't think I'm talking about financial attack. This is beyond financial attack. I mean, there are many people it shall not be financial attack. All different types of attack actually happening. The earth has actually, let me explain what's happening. If you look at what's happening in the natural, the earth has all of a sudden, there's a new war that has erupted at the intense level. That's China and what? America. Okay? There's a heightened state of conflict. Look at what's happening within the South China Sea. Now, many times, activities happen in the natural realm indicate what's happening in the realm of the spirit. Jesus. And I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit that opportunist attacks have been scheduled by the demonic. And the next three months, men and women must be very alert to the spirit realm. I've also been shown that concerning Barbados, we need to pray to stop a hurricane at the door. We can make a difference with it. So I'm publicly sharing it with you because I got, I got caught up in a vision and I saw the impact of a hurricane in Barbados, but the Lord told me this one can be stopped. It can be stopped. So he said, you need to pray and sound a prayer alarm to pray, to stop. This is going to be a very active hurricane season according to what they've said. So we need to pray. All over the Caribbean, we need to pray. And your prayers can make a difference. I have a friend of mine, great man of God, in the nation of Antigua. Antigua is blessed to have him. Apostle Paul, mighty man of God. And a hurricane was heading to the island. And everyone was in shelters. Everything had been shut down. The weatherman was, uh, was saying he's about to go and, and I, I like to head to the shelter. And the Lord spoke to him. And he went to the radio station and he commanded the nation, everyone who was listening to him, to turn the radio, their radio in the direction of the wind. And when they did that, he spoke against the demon behind the wind. Because remember the storm that arose. So this is a storm that arose when Jesus was sleeping on the boat. The Bible says a storm arose. Now when this storm arose, Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples said, Master, care not now that we perish. And Jesus woke up and said, where's your faith? And he spoke against the wind and he rebuked the wind. Let me see, he rebuked the demon behind the wind because that was an opportune attack. And he stopped it in his track. So this is trouble at the door. This was not sin, this was what? The wind of trouble, an evil wind, bringing trouble. I decree right now, let's begin to pray. I want you to say this, in the name of Jesus, every evil wind, any evil wind that the enemy is planning to release against my life, right now, I stop you at the door. You would not blow this wind into my life in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I command that wind to stop. Trouble shall not enter into my life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh my gosh. La Brobo Savarabasai. Now there's a song that my spiritual father's Song is one of the songs at ECG he sang, and it's a great song of preemptive prayer. And the song goes, I am building up the wall all around my city. 
So before the enemy comes, my walls are already up. Now, what happens when cities have an intelligence agency? When cities have spies, there are many cities around the world in the olden days that had spies. And when the spies tell them, because remember, it took a long time for armies. So if an army is coming from, for example, an army came from Babylon, which is Iraq, to attack Israel. That's a long match. And if you have spies, they can tell you an army is gathering to attack you, Jerusalem, and the people of Jerusalem can work to build a wall or strengthen an existing wall and strengthen their fortifications. So there are, because of good watchmen and good intelligence, you can know beforehand an attack is coming and do what? So cities will do what? Build up a wall or strengthen an existing wall so that the wall would protect them from the attack. That's right. So somebody needs to build up a wall before the enemy comes. Before the enemy comes. And so the song goes, I'm building up the wall. So this is a prophetic song for this season. It's a song of the season. It's a song, in fact, from next week. We're going to start singing it in church. I'm building up the wall all around my city. Before the enemy comes, my walls are already up because there are some attacks coming. But for our camp, our wall is going to be up. For you, your wall is going to be up. So before, now the enemy, when the enemy spies originally came, they saw you had no walls. They said, they're right for attack. And, and, and it would take 180 days for us to march, I mean, from where we are to launch the attack. But because you have spies and you build up a new set of walls in 60 days, because you, you, you work night and day. So some of you need to create this wall through prayer and some you need to create this wall through action. So when I saw in the realm of the spirit that this relationship that, that, that I had with this individual would lead to be betrayal, I built up a wall against betrayal. Amen. I built up a wall against betrayal. When I saw that, so you build up a wall through what? Prayer and spirit-led action. Through prayer and spiritual action based on what? Spiritual intelligence. Oh, based on what? Spiritual intelligence. So right now I release the anointing. Lift up your hands, people. I release the anointing for divine spiritual intelligence about impending, eminent, satanic and demonic attacks against your life, your family and your destiny in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release that anointing. Right now, that anointing is coming on people. Right now, I release that anointing. You don't have to fight this battle. Preempt it. So what happens is, when the enemy comes and he fires up the wall, he's discouraged and says, well, we didn't plan for a wall. We have to go back. We have to go back. We have to go back. My God. And he goes back with his tail between his legs. I've come to tell somebody today and make a declaration that the enemy shall live your life with a tail between the enemy's legs because you have heard the wisdom of God from me today and you're going to build up your wall. You're not going to have all night prayer after the attack hit. You're going to have all night prayer to stop the attack from hitting. And you're going to take spirit-led action to stop the attack from healing in the name of Jesus. Mm. Okay, there's some of you, I'm sensing the spirit right now, that there's a massive argument, massive strife, and massive division about to erupt in your family. 
and you can take spirit-led spirit action to create a wall and stop it from happening. You can stop it from happening by just being wise and smart and let the Spirit of God show you what to do. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. My, oh, my. Let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father, release the anointing on me. Release the anointing on me to rise up in prayer and prevent spiritual attacks, opportunity spiritual attacks from striking my life and my destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. I'm seeing somebody in a car accident. Jesus. My God. Wow. You have a white vehicle, a white SUV. Your woman. You may not be listening, but I see you in a car accident. Jesus. And I'm seeing you coming from the car accident and you are very scarred. Very, very scarred. One side of your body is, is, is messed up. In fact, I'm seeing who the person is right now. Jesus. Wow. Shikorobo Sakai. Every car accident ordained by Satan against the men and women in this camp, listening to me in our camp, in the name of Jesus, I stop it by the anointing in the name of Jesus. I stop it by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. All premature death, I stop by the anointing, stop by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. All deception, I stop by the fire of God. I stop by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you that I love you. I'm praying for you. You're part of my life. I'm part of your life. We are going to get into every part of the promised land that God has for us together. In the name of Jesus. And you are going to build up that wall. I cannot build a wall for you. You have to build up that wall. There's a, there is an interception I can do for you. But the reason why God spoke to me about this, there are certain walls you have to build yourself. So you have to build up this wall for yourself. You've got to do that. Love yourself, love your children, to be sensed in the spirit and build up the wall for your life and for your destiny. Amen. Because the greatest days of the church are here and you must be part of that rising. Amen, amen, amen. Now, one for those of you, hallelujah, who don't know, you can go to divinevisitation.com and release your seeds, your offerings, your tithes. You can do that on our website. And uh, we have some great news for you next week. And uh, we have uh, our Bible school has expanded. And uh, I'm just so excited about it. On, on Saturday, we're going to release it to, to our students. And then I will... Now focus on sharing more about it next week. I want somebody to say, my greatness shall not be hid by an opportunist attack. Let's say this together. My greatness shall not be hid by an opportunist attack by the devil. In the name of Jesus, can somebody say amen. I love you and shalom. Oh, somebody is saying, Bishop, Bishop, I just, I just remembered something. Bishop, you didn't share the song with us. How can I do that? Oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't share the song with you. Okay, the song is by Ezra Nee. I am going to find it and put it on our website. Not, not on our website, on, the, uh, on Facebook. I'm going to put the song up. It's called, I'm building up a wall all around my city. The power of preemptive prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. I actually heard someone's thought. Bishop has not shared the song. 
this is going to be a song for tomorrow as well. I'm building up the world. All around my city. Manda sovri bakata sovri bidikishe. Zere be koto kosa vra bato se vita bashuni. Manda sovri bidikiti giz. Zavaro bo savaraba. Tomorrow, we're going to have a prayer session together to build up the world together in our lives. All around the city of our lives and the city of our destinies. Amen. Share this video with everybody and make sure at 6.30, everybody is here assembled because we have to pray and preempt some satanic attacks from succeeding. Shalom. Cause you're surrounding me